Protein databases store protein data which may be in the form of sequences, motifs uh, where uh, within a sequence we can get some specific patterns of amino acids so they make up motifs. Uh, we can have structures in those databases or we can align those structures and we can have a database where we can find those structural alignments. Uh, first sequences to be collected were those of proteins uh, that's before nucleotide sequences so they were the first ever sequences uh, they were collected and in fact the scientists they were using methods developed by Sanger and Tuppy. Uh, that was back established in 1951. So most of the time, um, at that time, people they were focusing on uh, making the sequences from cytochrome molecules. Um, those uh, cytochrome sequences they were put together into form of an atlas under the leadership of Margaret Dayhoff at National Biomedical Research Foundation (NBRF) somewhere in 1960s. Um, this, these collections, they were later on um, became and they were deposited into PIR, Protein Information Resource, uh, which is now uh, working as a collaboration between NBRF, uh, Munich Center for Protein Sequences, MIPS, and International, uh, Japan International Protein Information Database, GPIT. SwissProt is a collaboration between uh, Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics and European Bioinformatics Institute. Uh, it weekly releases from 50 servers across the world and mainly it is controlled by XPACI uh, which is a main server in Geneva. Uh, here is the page for XPACI and you can find different structural alignments, uh, you can find different proteomics data. Uh, we can also have genomic data in it. Uh, same way international partnership between PEER, EBI and SID uh, they created Uniprot. So in Uniprot, they put the protein structure database of PIR called PIRPST and then SwissProt and Tremble. So Tremble is where we put those translated sequences uh, from the DNA. So DNA is translated into the proteins. So actually the protein sequences are actually coming from uh, different reading frames of those DNAs. Uh, using all six reading frames, we'll talk about those reading frames in some later lectures. Here is the page of Uniprot. As you can see, we have three main sections. Uh, we can have protein ontologies. Uh, it's labeled as PRO. And then we have Pro class, where we can have the sequences. And ProLink tells us about the literature. Here we look into the Pro, which is the protein ontologies. Ontologies are where we can classify those proteins on the basis of their functions. And uh, different functions, they have their uh, hierarchy. So ontologies are labeled in the shape of different hierarchies. So there is a major function and then there is a trend towards moving towards the specific function. So here we can see just a pro hierarchy, protein ontology hierarchy in this example. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, IPRO is basically uh, integration of different protein resources. So we can have sequences from here, we can have protein expression data, uh, we can uh, know about protein modifications. Uh, we can also look into the ontology same way uh, in this IPRO. Uh, we can also integrate the genomic data with the proteomic data. Whereas IPRO link provides the uh, uh, literature information and most of the research papers, uh, those we can find from here. PDB stands for Protein Data Bank. So basically it's a repository where we have the protein structures. Uh, these structures are obtained by um, different chemistry and molecular biology techniques like X-ray crystallography in the labs and then those, uh, those structures are submitted into the PDB where researchers uh, they can get those structures and then they can compare their predicted structures with them. So it's a good resource if you are working on structural protein bioinformatics. Whereas scope is a similar effort in which it uh, utilizes different structural elements on those proteins and then those uh, it classify those the proteins based upon those structural elements like family, fold, superfamily, domains and then classes. So class is the biggest in this scope hierarchy. Um, there are different uh, major group of classes uh, we can see here. For example, we have the class in which we have all alpha helices. These helices are formed by a special arrangement of amino acids. So basically, uh, when the protein sequence is 
and just a linear sequence of amino acids when it turns around itself it forms those secondary structures so those structures are then recognized as alpha and beta uh, we are not going into the details you might look into some molecular biology course for that or you can google for what those alpha and beta are uh, but the main idea to present here is that scope actually uh, classify the proteins on the basis of those structures so for example alpha in that class we have all proteins that contains alpha helices in them we can also have beta uh, same way we can have alpha slash beta uh, where we have alpha helices and then comes beta then comes alpha so they kind of uh, they are present one after another whereas in alpha plus beta we can have separate regions where we can have alpha helices uh, stacked together and then we have beta helices stacked together so in the end we conclude that uh, first sequences obtained they were of protein sequences and protein databases they can be classified on the basis of sequences uh, motifs structures uh, different structural uh, alignments and then obviously the growth of sequences in the databases just like uh, nucleotide databases is also relatively high